Hi everyone, I'm Bonita from Pennies to Dollars and welcome back to my channel where we talk about frugal living, saving money, cutting expenses, depression era tips, and all of those things that go along with living your best life. And yes, I understand that some people don't think frugal living is living your best life. I've absolutely been told by people, that's no way to live. That's no way to live. Why don't you enjoy yourself a little bit? Why don't you get out there and spend some money? Life's for living, not for being frugal. But let me share with you my thoughts on this today. <laughs> I look at it as everything that saves me money is a win. Everything that saves me money puts me on the path of the direction that I want to go. I recently retired, as many of you know, and I'm 57, almost 58. I'll be 58 in early January. But as I moved towards this goal, I reviewed everything I spent money on. I looked at ways I could save. I haven't bought any dress clothes in the last two years because I knew I was moving towards this path and I had enough dress clothes to get me through until my potential retirement date. I still have clothes I can wear to dress up in for a wedding, for church, for outings, I didn't need to buy anymore because I wasn't planning on continuing to dress up every single day. Just little things like that, I kept to myself and I just didn't spend the money because it was putting me on the path in which I wanted to go. I remember not being able to keep my house clean. I would always hit the high spots as my mom would say, like doing the dishes, doing the laundry. I just hit those high spots and a lot of things were just left go because I worked all the time. I would go from task to task, frantic, trying to just keep up, seeing that my house was getting farther and farther behind. Sometimes I was so busy, I didn't know if I was coming or going. Many times when I raised my kids, I felt like that. There was another ball game, another practice, another concert, another event they had to be at the school early to catch the bus. And as you know, you're just frantic, just trying to keep up with where you're supposed to be at any given time and still get to work and back and still have food in the house. I had no free time. I wasn't sleeping well and I was always behind no matter how hard I tried. I had so many goals, so many wish lists of things I wanted to do if I had the time. As my kids grew up, I kept thinking, well, when they get out of diapers, I'll have time. When they get out of grade school, I'll have time. Not knowing that when they got in high school, it was three times busier than when they were in diapers. And I just kept thinking, well, when they get on their own, I'll have time. And if any of you are middle-aged like I am, you realize that that time just doesn't come. Somehow you fill all of the time you have with more busy things and you just never feel like you ever have time. I remember the days being so drug out at work. Sometimes you would just look at the clock and it would be 10 minutes later and you would think, I have too much to do to be at work, but I have to be at work. And the days would just drag until five o'clock. I was living for the weekends, for holidays, for vacations before I quit. And honestly, that was no way to live. But that's how most people live every single day. And we get caught up in that cycle of rat race and no one thinks that there's any other options but to just keep plunging forward. Now I'm able to mark off some of those goals I had for things around the house. Now the days fly by and I just can't believe that it's already evening time. I have so many things that I fill my day with every day that interest me, keep me busy and keep me home, which I missed being home so much over all of those years. There were days I just dreamed of being home and then Dad always said, be careful what you wish for. It might come true. There would be days I would be home and all the kids were sick 
or I was sick. And I thought, this isn't what I meant by wishing I could be home. Now I'm able to focus on my health, which I never was able to do before. I never had time to focus on my health. I always listened to people that talked about getting up early and working out. I thought, I don't have enough sleep to even think about setting my alarm any earlier. There were times I was going to bed at 11 and 12 because I was still trying to get that uniform clean for tomorrow or that cookie that I needed to make for the concession stand done. There was just always something that just kept me hard pressed. Now I'm able to get excited about some of the things that I put on that wish list because I know I can actually accomplish some of them and have time to do it. There was many times I would put things on those wish lists and never get to them and just keep looking at that same old wish list going, this is never going to happen because I'm never going to have time to do it. Now I'm able to focus on new things, try new things, experiment with new things. And one of the experiments that I'm doing this year is that we parked our RV in Southern Texas and I'm going to be going back after the holidays to spend part of the winter there. And I'm going to take you with me. I love the warm weather and being able to quit work earlier gives me the opportunity to do those things and not just dream about them. And living frugally has made all of that happened. It's made it where I could afford to quit work because I had saved money to live on. It made it where I had cut expenses, where I was confident that I could make it once I quit work. And it taught me skills that has saved me so much money over the last few years. Just little things that I never had time to do before or experiment with, like making my own chicken broth. If you think about how many of those containers of chicken broth you go through in a year, during the winter, during the summer, in casseroles, in soups, in noodles, and I'm able to make all of that myself, I can't even imagine how much money that added up to because I've seen how much they cost in the store. Now I don't have to buy those things because I can make them at home out of stuff that I already have. So when I hear people say live a little, I think about the hectic life that they're living when they think that they're living a little. When I see all the fancy things that they own and they have, I wonder how much do they owe on them still? Are they even paid for? They may look nice, but I bet they still owe on them. And I know that I don't have much, but what I have is paid for. I don't owe any more payments on them. I don't owe any more interest on them. And they're not tying me down to having to work a job that I don't want to work just to meet the monthly payment. So I feel like that rat race living is no way to live. So unless you live this life, it's probably hard to see why people like us would choose it, but the benefits are endless. And now I have people saying, I'm so jealous that you were able to quit early. How did you do it? I wish I could quit early. I'll probably never be able to retire. But when I tell them some of the things that brought me to this point, they said, yeah, I don't wanna do that. So we all make our own choices on what is best for us. This was best for me. This was worth it to me. It's still worth it to me. And I'm excited at the challenge to see how I can continue this lifestyle and not feel stressed about money. That I will know that I can make it because my expenses are low. I got them low. I keep them low. And I'm confident that I can find new ways to save in even more areas. And as I do, those steps encourage me to continue looking, to continue seeing ways that I can save money day to day without spending extra money to do what is the normal thing. Maybe some of the things I do are not as normal as what other people would consider normal. Tonight, we are having one of those huge chicken breasts that I told you about, and we are going to split it. 
But when you see how big it is, you're going to understand why we can split one chicken breast that I paid $1.61 a pound for. And I'm going to share the marinade that I'm putting on it right now. This is one of those ginormous chicken breasts that I bought on clearance for $1.61 a pound and it will clearly feed two people. So this is a smoky lemon and herb marinade for chicken. It calls for one fourth of a cup of olive oil, two tablespoons of lemon juice, one tablespoon of soy sauce. And again, we use these liquid aminos because they are gluten free, one tablespoon of brown sugar, a half of a teaspoon of dried oregano, a half of a teaspoon of dried thyme, which is one of those that I rarely use, a half of a teaspoon of dried rosemary, which is also one that I rarely use, and a fourth of a teaspoon of liquid smoke plus salt and pepper. And you can use any flavor of liquid smoke that you would like. So let's get this marinade going. I have all of the ingredients that I just mentioned in this bowl. So we're going to give it a good whisk and get it mixed up really well. And this marinade can also be for about four to six drumsticks or thighs, but we're just making a breast today. So I'm going to add this huge breast in here and we are, look how big that is. We're going to get this marinated really well on both sides and we're going to leave it set in the refrigerator for about two to four hours before we cook it. And I'm going to leave it in the fridge upside down so that it really gets into most of the meaty part of the chicken. If you've ever accidentally cooked your turkey upside down, it makes it so moist. And then we're going to get this cooking at about 350 with the rest of the marinade poured on. As you can see, it soaked up most all of it. So I added a couple of cups of water and I'll just keep an eye on it. When it starts to brown on top, I'll cover it with foil. So I can't tell you how long to exactly cook it. I do the fork test, but I can guarantee you that it smells delicious and it's going to depend on the type of chicken and how many pieces that you make. So I hope you enjoy. What other things can I put with a chicken like that that I'm going to split? Well, I can save the bones to make more broth in the future, and it will have some of those seasonings already in there, which will make it even more tasty. I boiled some eggs a little bit ago, three of them, so we're each going to have three halves of a deviled egg. Another thing, very frugal. We still have some salad or coleslaw stuff to use up, so we're going to use up some fresh vegetables along with that and we're going to have a wonderful supper that isn't in the category of that's no way to live it's going to be delicious so it's possible to live frugally still have good food still have money and be able to make it and i am here to encourage you that if you've dreamed about this if you've wanted it as much as you possibly can Look into doing some of these things that will cut expenses just here and there. Those little things add up to hundreds of dollars over time. They really do. And all of those hundreds of dollars you can put towards your dream. So I hope this video has encouraged you that if you are living the rat race, if you are retiring early or wanting to retire early, if you are spending more than you care to spend and you're feeling strapped, that maybe some of these options might work for you. Have a great day and I hope to see you in the next video.